Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Acolyte Podcast. Today we are going back to a reading of Les Mis. Last time we had a vague description of candlesticks. Keep those in your mind. Today we'll be reading Chapter 7, Cravat. It is here that a fact falls naturally into place, which we must not omit, because it is one of the sort which show us what sort of a man the Bishop of Denil was. After the destruction of the band of Gaspard Bess, who had invested the forge of Olies, one of his lieutenants, Cravat, took refuge in the mountains. He concealed himself for some time with his bandits and remnant of Gaspard Best's troops in the county of Nice when he made his way to Piedmont and suddenly reappeared in France in the vicinity of Barcelonate. He was first seen at Jezeris, then at Toulouse. He hid himself in the caverns of the Jeu de l'Ange and thence he descended towards the helmets and villages through the ravines of Ube and Ubeyette. He even pushed as far as Enburn, entered the cathedral one night and despoiled the sanctuary. His highway robberies laid waste to the countryside. The Gendarmes were set on his track, but in vain. He always escaped. Sometimes he resisted by main force. He was a bold wretch. In the midst of all this terror, the bishop arrived. He was making his circuit in Chasteller. The mayor came to meet him and urged him to retrace his steps. Cravat was in possession of the mountains as far as Arche and beyond. There was no danger even with escort. It merely exposed three or four unfortunate grandarms to no purpose. Therefore, said the bishop, I intend to go without escort. You do not really mean that, Monsignor, exclaimed the mayor. I do mean it so thoroughly that I absolutely refuse any gendarmes and shall set out in an hour. Set out, set out, alone, alone. Monsignor, you will not do that. There exists Yonder in the mountains, said the bishop, a tiny community no bigger than that which I have not seen for three years. They are my good friends, these gentle and honest shepherds. They own one goat out of every thirty that they tend. They make very pretty woolen cords of various colors, and they play the mountain airs on little flutes with six holes. They need to be told of the good God now and then. What would they say to a bishop who was afraid? What would they say if I did not go? But the brigands, Monsignor! Hold, said the bishop. I must think of that. You are right. I may meet them. They, too, need to be told of the good of God. But, Monsignor, there is a band of them, a flock of wolves. Monsieur le maire, it may be that it is of this very flock of wolves that Jesus has constituted me the shepherd, who was that knows the ways of providence. They will rob you, Monsignor. I have nothing. They will kill you. An old good man of a priest who passes along mumbling his prayers? Bah! To what purpose? Oh, mon Dieu! What if you should meet them? I should beg alms of them for my poor. Do not go, Monsignor, in the name of heaven. Are you risking your life for? Monsieur Le Maire, said the bishop, is that really all? I am not in the world to guard my own life, but to guard souls. They had to allow him to do as he pleased. He set out, accompanied only by a child who was offered to serve as guide. His obstinance was bruited about the countryside and caused great consternation. He would take neither his sister nor Madame Maglore. He traversed the mountain 
on mule back, encountered no one, and arrived safe and sound at the residence of his good friends, the shepherds. He remained there for a fortnight, preaching, administering the sacrament, teaching, exhausting. When the time of his departure approached, he resolved to chant a te deum pontifically. He mentioned it to a cure. But what was to be done? There was no episcopal ornaments. They could only place at his disposal a wretched village sancristy, with a few ancient chrysobles of threadbare damask adorned with imitation lace. Bah, said the bishop. Let us announce our te deum from the pulpit, nevertheless, Monsieur de la Curie. Things will arrange themselves. They instituted a search in the churches of the neighborhood. All the magnificence of these humble parishes combined would not suffice to cloth the cloister of a cathedral properly. While they were thus embarrassed, a large chest was brought and deposited in the brevistry for the bishop by two unknown horsemen who departed on an instant. The chest was opened. It contained a cope of cloth of gold, a meter ornamented with diamonds, an archbishop's cross, a magnificent crossier, all the pontifical vestments which had been stolen a month previously from the treasury of Notre Dame and Dimbro. In the chest was a paper on which these three words were written. From Cravat to Monsieur Benevenu. Did not I say that things would come right of themselves? said the bishop. Then he added with a smile, To him who contents himself with the surplus of a curate, God sends the cope of an archbishop. Monsignor, murmured the curate, throwing back his head with a smile. God or the devil? The bishop looked steadily to the curate and repeated with authority, God! When he returned to Chasteller, the people came out to stare at him as at a curiosity all along the road. At the priest's house in Chasteller, he rejoined Mademoiselle Baptistine and Madame Maglore, who were waiting for him, and he said to his sister, Well, was I in the right? The poor priest went to his poor mountaineers with empty hands, and he returns from them with his hands full. I set out bearing only my faith in God. I have brought back the treasures of the cathedral. That evening, before he went to bed, he said again, let us never fear robbers nor murderers. Those are dangerous from without, petty dangers. Let us fear ourselves. Prejudices are the real robbers. Vices are the real murders. The great dangers lie within ourselves. What matters it what threatens our head or our purse? Let us think only of what which threatens our souls. Then, turning to his sister, Sister, never a precaution on the part of the priest against his fellow man. That which his fellow does, God permits. Let us confine ourselves to prayer when we think that a danger is approaching us. Let us pray not for ourselves, but that our brother may not fall into sin on our account. However, such incidents were rare in his life. We relate those of which we know, but generally he passed his life in doing the same thing at the same moment. One month of his year resembled one hour of his day. As to what became of the treasure of the Cathedral of Embrun, we should be embarrassed by any inquiry in that direction. It consisted of very handsome things very tempting things, and things which were well adapted to be stolen for the benefit of the unfortunate. Stolen they had already been elsewhere. Half of the adventure was completed. It only remained to impart a new direction to the theft, and to cause it to take a short trip in the direction of the poor. 
However, we make no assertion on this point. Only a rather obscure note was found among the bishop's papers, which may bear some relation to this matter, and which coached in these terms. The question is, to decide whether this should be turned over to the cathedral or to the hospital. All right, everyone, that brings us to the end of chapter seven, Cravat. And it gives us a very good understanding of how the bishop feels about criminals which is very important for our story moving forward. And I feel it's something that we should honestly consider ourselves. Can we judge every single person who's been put into that position by society? Or should we just concern ourselves with ourselves? It lends itself to personal responsibility. And it also hints to a little bit of honor amongst thieves. Um, the idea that there is a greater morality a lot of the time hidden in some criminals that you just have to have a willingness to understand uh, that leads us to begin chapter 8 next philosophy after drinking Thank you so much to everyone who has stuck with us so far. I cannot wait to keep going and to just really see where this channel is going to take me. Um, so yes, be sure to leave us a like and a subscribe. Hit that notification bell to be sure you're getting notified when I release new content. Um, be sure to come back again and let us know your opinions. We're always open to them. Bye.